Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. In this video, I want to continue the idea of this eigenvalue vector system. So we had this matrix that we defined up above. Let me just remind you from the last video where I had this unknown Q and we did some investigation on this. What I'd like to do now is to actually plot some points. So we're going to define the recursion length the way we always done. Let me evaluate this to make sure it's in there. And then let me try to plot this. Okay, so we're going to start off 1, 0. It looks like we're at 1, 0. And then I'm going to increase the number of points. J is going to count, well, the number of pieces or elements of my table. Actually, we're going to have one more element than J because we start at 0. If I let j increase, so right now I have 26 points, you see that with a q of 1.1, we're getting a system that's dynamically stable here. And that's kind of what we agreed with up top. That if I had this 1.1, that I had a dynamically stable, uh, stable system. I didn't write that here, but when we did this, we got eigenvalues both with norm equal to one or modulus one or length one or absolute value one, however you want to put it. So this is what we got when we had this dynamically stable system. And I also said that I think if I put a negative 1.3, if I'm remembering correctly, that I also wind up getting dynamically stable, but what I'll notice is that, take a look what's happening. In the beginning, I kind of go, but what's happening? That this is bouncing back and forth between two places. Hmm, that's my dynamically stable. Like I'm not going in this elliptical pattern here. Well, why is that? Well, with my negative 1.3, if I just evaluate the eigenvalues for this matrix A with the 1.3, I get my dynamic part, the alternating between two, and then this, well, that's going to go to zero. And that's what I get here. It's going to bounce back and forth as I increase the number of iterations here. Now, the other one that I had was the 1.9, and I know that's, going to, that's not going to be stable. If I evaluate this, I get one of my eigenvalues is bigger than 1. Well, the magnitude of it is, at least. Now, if I increase J, the graph isn't going to look great. So let's see if I can just play this and have it run through. You see, I'm losing the entire graph here. Why is that? because I set my plot range up to only be between negative two and two. Let me get rid of this and see what happens. All right, so let me run this. I'll do this very slowly. What's gonna happen is that, well, it looks like the, I mean, these numbers are getting very, very large. If I let this continue, things are getting big really, really fast in here. So I'm not sure if you can see what's really going on here, but the, the values get really big. So I'm going here, and then my second point is up here. My third point is over, I am into the negative range for the X, the first coordinate. My fourth point, well, that's J equals three because I start with zero. And I continue to do this. Now what's happening here is that this point, it doesn't look like it's moving, but take a look at the axes. Now the nice thing is that this is in a straight line. Um, why is this in a straight line? Because all I'm really looking at here are powers of 1.4 attached to an eigenvector. And that's going to produce things that are parallel to that eigenvector. And this one over here, well, it's not quite 
parallel, but it's so close. Because these numbers are getting really big. 1.4 to the 11th power is pretty big. So if I keep doing this, and I just let this run off, the thing is what happens, my little dot disappears. Not exactly sure why that happens, but it's somewhere in this region right here. Their numbers are getting really big. This is going off to infinity. So the interesting cases, I think, are the 1.1 and the negative 1.3. Here, I'll do this, and what will happen is the, the axis, sorry, will actually stabilize as well because my minimum and maximum for my x and the y's, they're going to stay bounded. Now, if I keep continuing this and let the j get higher than 100, I'm not going to get off of this. I know that because I have eigenvalues of magnitude 1. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, at least with the picture version of this. Again, like always, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good day. See you later.